Okay, we want to diversify our portfolio a little bit, and when we do that, I mean, we can do strictly ETF, you know, and, and um, uh, index options and so forth to build our portfolios, but sometimes it really does pay to have a stock or two in the portfolio because, you know, not all stocks move exactly the same as the market. Some stocks are going to go up when the market's going down, and some stocks are going to go down when the market's going up. And that really helps diversify the price risk that you have in your portfolio. So, you know, you want to take a look at stocks that have good and, and liquid options in them. IBM is one of those stocks. Uh, you also want stocks that have um, a good chart. And a good chart, uh, by what I mean a good chart, is that it, it looks like it's either trending or it looks like it's channeling in some way. <clears throat> and uh, let's take a look at IBM here just for a minute. Uh, if you go to your profit charts and click on profit and then type in IBM and click enter, you'll see a chart of, uh, of IBM here. Let's do a real quick little, uh, let's take a quick look at that and draw a little channel around it and see where the price has been and where, where we think it's going. If we draw a quick channel line on this, it looks like IBM right now is up around 126 and um, it looks like it's had a pretty good run. It's run up from about 96 maybe back in the beginning of January all the way up to 127. And for IBM, that's a pretty good move. And uh, so they've been, you know, it's been moving inside of this little channel going up all the way up to, I think the high here looks like it's around 129 maybe. I just put my curse over there. I can see it's 128.68. So... Let's say we wanted to do something with IBM because uh, IBM looks like it's kind of topping out here and we may get some sideways action or it might move down a little bit. Who knows? But it looks like it would be a good candidate for us. So let's go to our trade tab in our Thinkorswim platform. Go over to trade tab. We'll pull up IBM and pull up the June options. Now, there's one thing that we want to look at before we really start to take a look at these options, and that is you know close up you know you want to close up your option months so the arrow for June of 08 should be pointing towards the June and not down so you don't have the options open and the same with July and now and for all the months so what we want to do is we want to go over to the right side and take a look at what's called the implied volatility of these options if we follow June all the way across, we can see that the implied volatility is 21.1. July, it's 23.4. October, it's 25.6. And if, if we were going to do a calendar spread on any one of these, what we want, ideally, is something called a positive skew. A positive skew means that the front month, which would be June in this case, uh, has a higher implied volatility than the second month that we're going to be buying. The reason for that is that volatility increases the price of the option. So we want to sell the option for as much as we can possibly get. And if the implied volatility is higher in the front month, that means the options are actually more expensive than the ones in the second month, and those are the ones we're selling. So that actually works in our favor because we want to sell them for as much as we possibly can. So if we take a look at June, we see that it's 21.1% uh, 21 uh, 21 implied volatility. The July is 234 If we subtract those two from each other, we have a uh, negative number. We have a negative 23 approximately. So that's a negative skew. We don't like negative skews normally over two points. So we're not going to do IBM at this point. What we'd like to have ideally is an option in the front month that has a higher implied volatility than the one in the second month. So let's take a look at another stock. In this case, uh, let's pull up MNST. Okay, <clears throat> MNST is uh, Monster Worldwide. They run a website for people who are looking for a job. Uh, and in this case, you can see that the June options, the front month options, 
Uh, we're still in our trade tab here. We want to take a look at MNST is the option symbol. And if we follow June across, <clears throat> we see that it has an implied volatility of 51.2, uh, 51.22 to be exact. The July options have an implied volatility of 47.53. Now remember that the front month, if it has a higher implied volatility than the second month that we'd be selling, is, some, is called a positive skew. You take the front month of June is 51.2 and you subtract it from the 47.5 and you get a, uh, a number. In this case, it'll probably be, uh, it looks like it's going to be about I don't know, 370, 3.7% 3, 3, uh, 3. Um, positive skew. Now, generally when that happens, when you have something more than two points over uh, a positive skew, so that in this case it's 3.7 positive skew, it means that in in prob the probability is that they have, op they have uh, earnings coming out very shortly. And that's why the options have a, 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 uh, such a positive skew on them. Uh, if that's the case, then what we need to do is take a look at our profit charts here and let's put in MNST and uh, Let's take a look at the chart here. The chart, as you can see, I've been following it for a while. It's been channeling down into this uh, uh, back, oh boy, if you go back about a year or so, the high was 49. It's currently selling for 27.09. We've had a little bit of a run up here in the, in the stock lately, but it has been trending downward. These, these actually can be very, very good stocks to put calendars on because not only has volatility increased as the stock has moved down in price, but also they tend to they they don't tend to bounce back right away. They tend to channel, and they tend to move in a range for a while before they actually start breaking out to the upside. If they do continue to the upside, so this may be a very good candidate for us. Uh, it looks like they just had earnings. You can tell on the profit chart. Uh, if you have it set up, I think you can go into chart settings, go into your prefer preferences here, and uh, there's a couple of different um, there's a couple of different things that you can actually put in here. Let's see, now that would be for appearances. Let's take a look at the other here. Uh, themes, yeah, watch this. Now it looks like they include those automatically, so you shouldn't have to. Uh, yep, they do. It looks like they include those uh, those symbols automatically, which is a good thing because you want to know when a conference call or when an earnings announcement has been made, and it looks like they just had their earnings announcement. So this is a very good candidate then for a calendar spread. Let's go back to our trade tab then and take a look at the June options. Now we've got uh, we've got calls and puts, and we'd like to do double calendars. Those are my favorite. Now you can also do single calendars, and then later, if you need to adjust, go into a double calendar. But let's do a uh, let's do a double calendar on Monster, and we generally take the strike price that is just above the current price. So the current price is twenty seven dollars and fourteen cents. So we'll take a look at doing a uh, double calendar on the 30 calls, and then we want to do a uh, uh, put calendar uh, as part of our double uh, calendar at the 25 calls. So let's uh, just uh, right click and go to buy, double, double diagonal, and then select double calendar in the menu. Now we have to change the uh, the puts on this that automatically brought up our 30 calls.